Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, we're going to be blasting the false figure, a promised end demo, slash EP, I'm not really sure, but four tracks of awesome death rock, whatever you want to call it. It rolls 2019 on Transylvanian recordings. At the time, it was still Transylvanian tapes. If you have not heard this bad boy yet, go check out my review. This is more Bajas worship, and today I obviously can't play any music from this record because copyright, but this was the first legitimate angry piece of music I ever heard. I'm not counting, like, Morbid Angel or anything like that. Like, I first heard this when it came out, and as, like, legitimately being a little kid, I had, you know, heard Pretty Hate Machine, but it was broken that really got me into Nine Inch Nails at a very young age. And this EP, wow. I mean, for one, thank you, Miss Hewitt. Ridiculous gift here from, you know, the original cassette to the, you know, pretty much uh, the definitive edition of the vinyl, which I know for a fact we did not order, so they accidentally threw in this monstrosity, and you get the six original tracks plus the two bonus tracks on... Something that really surprised me because I never thought I would own something like this. Yeah. Like, having a 9 inch nails 7 inch is just ridiculous. And, you know, I love that add on ant cover, it's just sick. And, like, the shit by Pig Face also. Like, hell yeah. But, real quickly, like, just... Everything about this... 180 gram vinyl. I'll read you the hype sticker. The definitive version of Broken, meticulously prepared by Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails art director John Crawford. Remastered in 2016 on 180 gram vinyl with lots of details added that you might never notice, but we care about. Halo 5, original release date, September 22nd, 1992. I always love, like, and, like, caution not for use of mono devices, but, like, I always love the lyric layout, like, because I had the cassette version, like, when I was a kid, but, um, this is a one-sided 12-inch, and it has, like, seriously the coolest, like, etching, it's like a spiral, see it? You know, because this leads up to the downward spiral, and there's, like, words etched in and stuff, it's just, it's fucking cool. Like, certain words are, like, etched out, and it's just awesome. Like, I, every time I look at it, I try to find, like, a new word. It says, no something. But, yeah, it's badass. 33 RPMs. 
course you play that side with the grooves. Don't be an idiot. And this was worth every single penny. Like, seriously, ridiculous. And I know most of you probably know of the broken film, which is pretty much a snuff film. Like, it was a, a fake one, but it was real enough looking that it would have overshadowed this musically big time. From some of the footage I've seen of it, and like, I have a friend that, you know, he went out of his way to find a copy of this, like, probably around, like, 2006. I'm not sure. I, I don't know how, what or where he got it, but I don't even know if it was the full, you know, video. But, like, Broken was secretly recorded from March to August 1992 in a variety, a variety of locations without the permission of the record label to ensure it could fester without divine intervention. Now they just leave me alone and let me do what I want. Broken was a hard recording to make. Broken is an ugly record made during an ugly time in my life. Broken marks phase three of Nine Inch Nails, The Becoming. I'm starting to realize what this is all about, and I really don't like it. Blood started out producing, but I ended up not sure why. Maybe I am what everyone seems to think I am. Nine Inch Nails is still not a real band with real people playing real instruments. There will be no touring for Broken. I am starting work on my new full-length recording, The Downward Spiral, which I hope will be finished by the beginning of 1993. Some will come along for the ride, some won't. Trent Reznor, 1992. Broken, six-track mini-album, October 5th. CD, limited edition vinyl, cassette. And then there's a note here from Nine Inch Nails, or two Nine Inch Nails. Hold on, let me figure this out. Summer 1993, thank you very much for writing. We apologize greatly for taking an eternity to respond. The past two years have been a time of transition and change for Nine Inch Nails. For those of you that have not been able to follow the story in the press, Nine Inch Nails' Broken six-song EP was the first release on our label, Nothing, under the umbrella of Interscope Records. The huge success of Broken, including Going Platinum, owes a great deal of thanks to you for the support. There has been some confusion about Broken we'd like to clear up. Broken was conceived as a six-song EP. It is not the new full-length CD that Trent is working on, which turned out to be the Downward Spiral. If some stores charged full-length CD price for it, that is out of our control. Also, it was unpublicized. But the first writing of Broken contained a three-inch three mini-CD with two songs about eh, with two songs on it in a separate sleeve. The, sub, the subsequent printings of Broken put the two extra tracks at the end of the regular CD after a passage of silence. The idea was that the fans who would who were the first to purchase Broken got a little surprised. We learned that retailers got the story wrong even though they were all informed of it through printing materials sent and told shoppers that the three inch cds was inserted randomly throughout the packages we are sorry if you were told this mistakenly 
The next release for Nine Inch Nails was the Fix single, featuring remixes, reinterpretations, and otherwise bastardized tracks used the recordings from Broken as a base. Fixed was limited to one printing of 50,000. Damn, that's crazy. Like, 50,000 is just like, eh. It's awesome, though. Like, Trent is currently writing and recording new material for his full-length CD, tentatively titled The Downward Spiral. At the time of this letter, a fall release is scheduled with a tour of America, Australia, and Japan to follow. Many of you have requested information on ordering Nine Inch Nailed In merchandise. We have taken the liberty of enclosing an order form with all currently available items. Your letters and interest in Nine Inch Nails is absolutely appreciated. Please find enclosed a free fix sticker from us as a way of saying thanks for all the support now and in the future. Nine Inch Nails. And Glass Everywhere gives you a pretty much a summary of what was going on. A little bit about, you know, the video and stuff. Like, because I've seen a little bit of the video, but not the full thing. It's pretty, pretty fucked. But, like, they made some regular music videos for, like, uh, Gave Up. And, like, if you've ever seen the Dillinger Escape Plan play Wish with Nine Inch Nails, it's fucking amazing. Like, it, it's, it's legitimately fucking amazing. Like, I know this is... Uh, like... I don't know if it's just because I have this in my hands right now, and the downward spiral is just kind of out of arm's length at the time. This is just such a ridiculous recording, in my opinion. It's held the test of time. This 2017 reissue is just... Wow. Absolutely just wow. It's so gnarly that this has legitimately held up. Like, from the instrumental track, Pinion in the Wish, Last, Help Me I'm in Hell, Happiness and Slavery, and then Gave Up. Gave Up is one of those songs. It's just. It's so fucking good, and like, if you've ever seen the Woodstock 94 set, when they play Happiness and Slavery, that was so life-changing, as corny as that sounds for myself, like, seeing music be that dangerous, it was just incredible, I don't know. It was one of the, it's, and still, again, it's one of those performances, like Broken and the Downward Spiral, that have withstood the test of time. And I just think it's, you know, really fucking cool having this on two analog formats. And here's what I'm talking about, like, I'll never forget this as a kid. I thought this was so cool. Like, how the, how the J card just had the NIN. I wish I could get into this closet. There's old Nine Inch Nail shirts in here from, like, 1994, 95. Like, up until, like, further down the spiral. There's Nine Inch Nails shit. But this is like, have, is this closet has been jammed shut for a couple years now. So, yeah. Trust me, I've tried to get in there plenty of fucking times. But this sounds great on cassette, but the vinyl version, the definitive version, 
called the definitive version for a reason. I wish I could share it with you. But whoever owned this prior, please, folks, listen to your music. But luckily for me, this person bought this and probably forgot they even had it or used to own a record store and needed some money and decided to sell some old stock that was lying around because it's legit in absolute perfect condition. There's like a little tiny scratch and that's it. Like this is 1992. Yes, no reissue. But the vinyl, I was blown away. Like just like, cause I didn't expect the definitive version. I was just expecting the regular version of this piece. So, yeah, very very important record in my life, and you know it really this. And the downward spiral, just, and even further down the spiral, like, I was getting into bands like Naked Reagan, Peg Boy, like, kind of like Chicago punk and shit, and, as well as, like, hardcore, like, um, Sick of It All, I remember, like, hearing Agnostic Front in, like, a bike video, DRI, 100%. In a skate video, and then Unsane used the footage from that skate video, which was Toy Machine Welcome to Hell, in uh, a music video for Scrape. I'm sure some of you geezers like myself remember Scrape. It would be on before fucking school. You'd be seeing skaters eat shit, and but it was pretty much the it was if you had Toy Machine. Welcome to hell, you already owned that bail section. Thank goodness bail sections are not in fucking videos anymore. I, I hate seeing people get hurt. It's the, it's the last thing. Like, it used to boggle my mind, like, because like, I don't want to watch people get hurt before going out riding, you know? Like, I don't, that's just me, but it was just a time... A good bail section, you know, sometimes it's funny, but when people are actually, like, getting fucking, like, murdered, which in Toy Machine Welcome to Hell, it's fucking brutal, yeah. It's, like, one of those bail sections, when you watch it, you're like, okay, like, want to do something else? Let's make, like, make some tunes or some shit. But, um, speaking of which, I need to go over this one day. I was, um thinking about it, and I was like, man, I haven't gone over this yet, and if you know what this is, you know what this is, if you don't, you soon, you soon will, but, um, yeah, this is a big one right here, this is one of those, you know, 90s releases that is kind of like just I mean you get unsane fucking Jesus lizard there's so much good stuff on here fucking dwarves uh I think Melvin's have a track on here lubricated goat helmet could have swore there was a Melvin's track on oh yeah there is uh vertigo But, um, yeah. Again, I'm gonna go into dope guns and fucking in the streets. But, just right now, Nine Inch Nails. But, again, this is one of those compilations, you know, this... It, it's a gnarly one, and... Again... It's not death metal, but... It's highly influential... Like, I mean, so many bands, if you ask them, will slate Helmet as a inspiration. I love Unsane. Like, I really do. I'm a big Unsane fan. 
I love, same like today's the day. I fucking love today's the day. I know some people just can't stand Steve Austin's voice, but I fucking love it. Um, oh my god, Temple of the Morning Stars, like definitely one of my like top five favorite records ever. Sadness will prevail, Kiss the Pig, and then like all the stuff with um the Mastodon dudes. Like he recorded that Burn the Priest album that I remember in high school, like. Kids would always be like, I, I, I was I was a Burn the Priest fan before I was in the Lamb of God. And it's like, well, you weren't at that show at the kill time. And they'd be like, what's the kill time? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is Nine Inch Nails Broken. This EP really did have a big impact on my life. And, you know, I'm not going to say it's why i'm such a big fan of synthesizers and stuff but um you know like some people ask me like do you like industrial music and normally i say no and then i'm i think about it and i'm like oh like godflesh is like one of your favorite fucking bands like you know early ministry is pretty fucking sick like, you know, like, especially, like, the mind's a terrible thing to waste, shit, uh, what's the live one, the mind's a terrible thing to taste, I, I, I'm drawing a weird blank, but, uh, yeah, there's just certain recordings that just, they have something, and it's just this sonic energy, and you can just legit hear how pissed Trent is on this recording and just the production is fucking ridiculous like i really wish trent reznor like i mean i'm sure he's completely unaffordable busy as fuck but i would love to hear him produce a death metal record like real to real doing it the way that i'm sure trent would want to record it but, I don't know. I, I feel like if you gave a band like Harm's Way a producer like Trent Reznor, you would have something totally different. Like, it, def it wouldn't be hard. Like, it would still be hardcore, I think. But, I think they would take advantage of the fact we're working with Trent Reznor. And I know Bo is a big Nine Inch Nails fan. I don't. I honestly don't know much about Harm's Way. That one record I went over that sounds like fucking early Sepultura. Well, not early Sepultura, like mid era Chaos AD Arise ish Sepultura. And uh, that's a badass album. It has John Hoffman from Weekend Nachos on it. But um. Yeah, you know, you always see those guys like James and Bo wearing Nine Inch Nails shirts, and, like, there's a reason for that. Like, some of the songs I have heard from, like, albums like Rusted, you can hear that Nine Inch Nails vibe. Code Orange is as popular as they are because Nine Inch Nails, it's in their DNA. Like, you just, it, just listen. Again, if you've never heard the Broken EP, it might just... Legitimately, I'm not trying to sound like a fucking snob, but it might go over your head. This EP is legit, like, one of the most important pieces of music from the 90s, in my opinion. These six songs... Eight songs, technically, but these six songs on... Right here, in my hand... On the A side are just some of my personal favorite Nine Inch Nails songs and just some of my personal favorite songs, period. Like, Wish and Gave Up, definitely two of my favorite Nine Inch Nails songs, along with Something I May Never Have, and then, you know, the in I'm not even joking, the entire Downward Spiral record. It's just a fucking... 
Yeah. That's, like, perfection. And same here. Like, this is... I'm trying not to kiss his ass more so than already, but this is pretty much fucking perfect. I can't think of a goddamn thing wrong with Broken. It's already fixed. They didn't need to do a remix <laughs> release. Limited to 50,000, which is crazy. But still, that's one of those records that if you've never heard it, just remember, it's 1992, you're in second grade, and like you're in your friend's brother's room with your friends, and you already know who Nine Inch Nails are, and you find this on, he had the CD, and I just remember like when we put it on, like, I would bring over, like, you know, I had a blank tape, and like, you know, we would go through his CDs and make, like, mixtapes and shit. And that's a way that, you know, before, like, going to the mall to buy music, we could still buy toys and shit. But then it eventually became, like, I want to go to the mall to see if they have, you know, this single. Because I was all about buying singles for a little bit. And compilations as well. Compilations got me into, like, fucking... I have to thank, like, uh... It, it was a Metal Blade compilation. Uh, I was in, like, middle school, I think. I, I don't remember what year it was, but whatever year Bolt Thrower, um... From Victory, I think, whenever that album came out, they were on this Metal Blade compilation. And I just remember being, like, this band is fucking sick. Like, I don't know how I never... Like, I had heard the like, obituary and shit, but it was one of those things that I just... I never heard Bolt Thrower. So, like, when I first heard them in, like, middle school, probably, it was just like, fuck. <laughs> this is gnarly. Because I remember checking out Realms of Chaos and being like, alright, dude, this is fucking cool. And when I got older, that's when, like, it was, you know... Fourth Crusade, like, that was, like, my fucking shit, and then, like, in Battle, There Is No Law, like, that, those two records to me, and I know this might be an unpopular opinion, most people go with Realms of Chaos, and I understand, but, you know, it is what it is, but again, that's on the opposite end of the spectrum, but I just really feel like a band like, you know, and I'm not just using Blood Incantation for just the sake that it's Blood Incantation. I just feel like they would do an amazing job with Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor producing a Nine Inch Nails record. Like, it would be fucking crazy. But I do feel that if he worked with someone like, you know, False Figure, it might turn out too much like Bajas. So I think if he worked outside of, or, you know, let's say he did work with, like, Justin Broderick, you might have Street Cleaner version 2.0. Because, like, as good as, you know, even the new material, like, Post Self, A World Not Only by Fire, Street Cleaner's Street Cleaner. It's just one of the best. Like, again, I hold... Like, when it comes to this type of music, you know, it's very oppressive and just pissed off. But I heard Nine Inch Nails before I heard God Flesh. I'm not going to try and act like I heard God Flesh first. So, thank you, Nine Inch Nails, for opening the door for me sonically when it came to that style of music. Because otherwise, I probably would have been like, what the fuck is this but no like i completely understood i had already heard swans so like i knew i was like oh like holy shit yeah and i hope some of you younger folk you know go on a similar music ad adventure like where you know you have like a crust punk phase and you have a straight up like funeral doom phase and like sludge phase where all you're doing is listening to like grief earthworm on fucking repeat 
and ruined. Like, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But, yeah. That's life. At least for me, and I'm glad it worked out that way. Because I can listen to Macabre Dahmer and then throw on, you know, like some Wu-Tang and be fucking very content. I actually feel like listening to some Three Six Mafia, but... Yeah. Anyways, Nine Inch Nails Broken on Nothing Records and Interscope. What a fucking legit masterpiece right here. And definitely one of the best pieces of music from the 1990s leading up to the downward spiral. Just fuck yeah. And just... I know some of you are very nostalgic. I know this will bring back a lot of memories. It's only missing a sticker from the, the wall. But, yeah. If you were, you know, a 90s kid, you definitely recognize that bad boy right there. But as always, thanks for watching, you fucking roll. Listen to Nine Inch Nails Broken. For real. If you never heard it before, you'll seriously thank me. And if you haven't heard it in a while, it has aged wonderfully. Fucking A. Hey.